All right, well, now back out. Oh wait, what have we got? What have we got in our inventory that's new? Oh, the bar of soap, right. Uh, castle soap. Here it comes. Uh, flop. Hmm, I see. Dynamite. Examine it. You examine the dynamite. It's got an end you light, and then the blows up. Okay, just check him. You never know. Uh, anything going on here? No. no. Poison an enemy? Fair enough. Nope. Alright, alright. Oh, wait, wait, we gotta turn in these mugs. We gotta turn in these mugs. Yo there. Got s I found these mugs. Nice. Alright. See ya. Alright, now let's go find ourselves some horses out there. Let's go to Orhol Mine, since we also know this is where a shovel is hiding. Look behind the outhouse. Hey, he wasn't kidding! Not that this would have been a funny thing to get about, you guess. Got a shovel. Nice. Meat ore in this cart. Dig through it. Dude. 50 meat? Damn. Oh, found a mug. Alright, into the mine we go. As soon as it loads the mine. Alright. What we got here? Examine the controls. Label cargo elevator control. Plungers, both kinds. Blasting cap storage tools. Uh... Let's leave that alone for a moment and come over here, get ourselves some meat ore. Can't get past those. There's no plunger hooked up to it. Ah, the puzzle comes together. So we want plungers, which are on level two. All right, give me, give me one of these here plungers. Detonation plunger. All right. Probably gonna need a blasting cap if I had to guess. Hook the plunger up. Fighting against your instincts for self-preservation, you've hooked up a plunger and slung it, a, strung it a fair distance away. Do it. You press the plunger and nothing happens. You've got to hook up a blasting cap, as expected. All right, blasting cap storage. So nice of these elevator, these uh, storage areas to be nicely labeled and have an automatic elevator. Uh, these crates are all labeled blasting caps. The period is part of the label. That's why it's an inside the quotes like that. Dang it, looks like you're gonna need a crowbar to pry open one of the crates. Ah, no problem. Tools. Nice. Pick the lock, using a needle. Ah, it all comes together. Good thing there were like three haystacks. You managed to unlock the toolbox, but the, proofs, but the needle was ruined in the process. Most of the tools inside are rusted away to nothing, but there's a pretty nice crowbar. Perfect, that's the only tool we needed, other than ourselves, of course. All right. Pry open one of the crates with your crowbar and grab a blasting cap. All right, let's do it. Add a blasting cap. Okay, you've succeeded in putting yourself in grave danger, just how I like it. And we're in, boys. And here's the horse who somehow managed to get in here. What's up? You see the dark horse? Barely. Hey there, girl. It's okay. I'm a friend. Winnie. The horse shies away from you, though in this case it's more like cripplingly introverts away from you. Mm. Reassure her. Ah, come on, don't be like that. Look, I brought some oats for you. They aren't poison or anything. In retrospect, I guess that wasn't a very comforting thing to say. Um, uh, here. Uh, you take a handful of oats, I'm back. Here you go, yum yum. Snort. She sidles away from you warily and makes a surprisingly good attempt at hiding in her own shadow. A sad horse. Come on, please. You, you reach out to pat her on the nose. The horse ducks and steps further back into the shadows. Ah, come on. Nay. Look, they're fine, okay? See? You take a handful from the bag and toss them in your mouth. Ugh, it's like the roughest, blandest cereal you've ever eaten. Still, it's better than dry cat food, don't ask. You smile to show the horse that you're fine and realize that you've unconsciously turned around and walked out the door. Jeez, these are powerful. The horse looks at you warily as you re-enter with a cheerful wave. See, perfectly fine. There you are. All right, that didn't pat her on the nose. The horse hunches her shoulders and seems to shrink slightly as you pat her nose. But she doesn't actually flee. So there's some, that's something. There's a good girl. Winnie. Feed her the oats. The horse finally seems relaxed enough around you, so you offer her a handful of the oats. Warily, begrudgingly, she eats them. Then she gestures at something behind you. You turn around to look, but don't see anything. When you turn around, she's gone. Well, okay then. Job well done, team, I think. Oh, examine the hole. You bend down and shine your lantern into the crack of the rock. You can just barely make out a square shape down in there, well out of arm's reach. Look like somebody dropped a small metal box into the hole. Though you don't know if it was to hide it or to discard it. 
If you're truly desperate to find out what's in there, you could try reasoning with the rock. Your primary argument would be a bundle of dynamite. Perhaps you could persuade the hole to ride wide enough to grab the box. Three dynamite! Jesus Christ! Some rocks are so... unreasonable. I think we needed silver for, like, the dude who wanted tra to trade back in town. I don't know. Either way, we need more dynamite, as it turns out. Alright, Thousand Snake Gulch. The perfect place to go as me, a snake oiler. Oh, one of, one of these rocks is really shiny. Got a shiny rock, dude! What a day. Eek. Ow. Dag nabbit. This is a quite big snake. This snake looks sleepy, but not that sleepy. Let's do it. Let's fucking go, snake. We got the jump on him this time, apparently. Alright. Fucking easy game. We got one venom and one medicine. You've slain a snake. Before long, they'll call you Snake Murder in Paco. That's what they already call me if you catch my drift. Another snake? Well, I guess it's not called One Snake Gulch. Fair. Ah, oh, wow, these jerks are quick. How fucking dare you. Hmm. Didn't die in one shot from my finger gun. Oh, wait, no, I have an actual gun now, don't I? Right. Kind of tempting just to unequip the gun to use the finger gun again, honestly. You made short work of that long snake. You collect one venom and two medicine. Press. Just bang into every cactus. This snake looks really angry. You're gonna need to, every trick in the book to beat this one. I'm good at tricks. What are you gonna do when I deploy my own fucking snake, snake? Hmm? Now what? That's what I thought. And it just disregards the snake and comes right at me. How fucking rude. It's alright, I feel like we've got this one. No problem, you have to get up pretty early in the AM to pull one over on an experienced snake oil. Nice work, if the whole cowboy thing doesn't work out, you could always try a job as a snake exterminator. That's already what I was, have you not been up to date? This horse has gone snake crazy, or maybe he was some kind of crazy before. I mean, he does look a little... tweaked. Hey there, boy. Hey, fella, I'm a friend, okay? It's cool, alright? Be cool. Don't freak out on me. Really? Look him in the eyes. You calmly look the horse in the eyes. One of them is fixed in a glassy thousand yard stare and the other is revolving madly in its socket like he's thinking of trying to escape in every direction simultaneously. He looks to be calming down a little now that it's clear you aren't actually made of spiders though. You carefully, gently pat the horse's nose. He twitches a bit, okay, a lot, but seems to recognize that you aren't gonna eat his eyes or suck out his soul or whatever madness is bouncing around in that skull of his. That's a good boy. Are you hungry, boy? I got a little treat for you. Snurf. You feed the crazy horse some of the homing oats and it gallops away with a whinny, or rather a whinny. Hopefully he's headed home and not into the 12th dimension. Cool. Anything hiding over here? Nope, just more cacti, which are still pointing. Alright, now, Boneyard Springs. Let's go. Let's find that final horse and then buy a horse. Our founder, Ze Zephaniah Boring. He was actually a really interesting guy. The mug. Benjam Benjamin Crockett, he showed up way too early. Oh, can we dig this one? Dig up the gray fight? Dude, is this a pirate skeleton? That's pretty sick. Ooh, he's got a few hit points, how about that? Now, skeletons are a little outside my realm of, realm of expertise, seeing as I deal mostly in snakes, but I feel like we've got this one still. You put a stop to the Captain, Skele to Captain Skeleton's unnatural animation. A gold tooth and an old cavalry saber. Writ level 2, also. I don't know what that means, but uh, can we equip this? Yeah, it's probably better than a broken board, if I had to guess, you know? Let's consult the character also. What's, uh, what's grit do? The extent to which you are truly gritty. The higher it is, the tougher you'll be. Mm, fair enough. Oh, dead eye. You're a crack shot. You can bullseye a bullseye at 300 paces. You can shoot a fish in a barrel, even if the fish is really small and the barrel is really big. Hornswoggle. Wait, what's that? At this level. Ah, I see. Hornswoggling. You're a city slicker and a witty trickster. 
They, they ain't yet invented a lock that'll keep you out, except for the ones that are above my level. You know, those ones are a little bit out of my area. What's up there, buddy? You seem to be having a bit of a problem over here. A skeleton. You're not getting past it without a scuffle, even though I could walk just like on the other side of the road, but whatever. A scuffle it is. We got the jump on it somehow. All right, it's fucking dead now. All right, no ceremony to that one. Oh, fuck, it's a horse. Uh, Timothy Crane, devoted husband, beloved daughter, a baby. All right, that's sad. What's up, ghost horse? Your pulse quickens as you get near the spooky, translucent horse. You approach the weird, semi-transparent horse cautiously so as to not startle her, though you quickly come to the realization that this is not a horse that startles easily. Hello there. Hi, I'm a friend, okay? Nay. That's a little strange. How did you, did you do that without opening your mouth? Pat her on the nose. You pat the horse's nose, which is very cold. If you were going to ride her, you would want an extra saddle blanket to keep your butt from freezing. Yep, it's still cold. Is this going to pay off if I do it like a hundred times? I don't have that level of patience. There you go, girl. Have some oats. You hold out a handful of oats for the horse, but she just snort, sort of stares right through you. Brr. Please don't look at me like that. Snort. Try the oats again. You hold out the oats again, but the horse continues to ignore them. What's the matter? Are they not spook? Are they not spooky enough? I'm not sure how to make oats spooky. I guess I could put some bone meal on them, but I don't have anything handy to grind up bones with. Grave dirt. Winnie. Is that a yes? Weird. Okay. Add some grave dirt to the oats. You sprinkle the oats with just a little bit of grave dirt and hold them out again. The horse grazes expressionlessly at them and eats them. Nay. And with that, she glides away in the direction of town. Bizarre. Alright, job well done. It's time to slide our way back to town. And by slide our way back to town, I mean click on the fucking map. A job well done. Horsery. Nice. I don't know how you spotted her hiding in that mine, but thanks for bringing back my dark horse. Sure thing. Looks like my pale horse made it back safe. Thanks for the help. Anytime. Thanks for finding my crazy horse. He was eating loco weed again, wasn't he? Not that I noticed. Alright, that's all of them. I can't thank you enough. Here's a little extra. Nice. So, you said something earlier about an injury? Yeah, I busted my knee while mucking out the showroom. Don't ask, it's embarrassing. I was gonna get Doc Alice to look at it, but she gave up doctoring. Why'd she do that? Nobody knows. She just shut herself up in her office. Said she couldn't talk to anyone except Nurse Whiskey. I found some Nurse Brand Whiskey. Is that natural nurse or... I'm pretty sure she was just being sarcastic. I see. So, uh, can you sell me a horse, though, also? Sure thing. I should warn you, though. Horses get mighty attached to their rider. Once you've brought one, you won't be able to change your mind later. Which one are you interested in? Definitely the one with the crazy eyes. Give me the one with the crazy eyes. Okay, I gotta warn ya, this horse has seen some sh some stuff, but I'll sell him for a thousand meat. Is, is there something wrong with him? No, not as such. He's personally perfectly functional, but... Well, he's always sneaking off the thousand snake gulch to chew on local weed that grows there, and that makes him see crazy things. I think it's more like he does that to forget about the crazy things he sees all the time. Color me intrigued, I'll take him. All right, here's the keys, ride safe. Give him a name. Tim seems like a perfectly acceptable name. Tim it is. Are you sure you want to name your horse Tim? Yes. All right, Tim the horse, it's got a nice ring to it. Okay, I almost forgot, free with every horse, purchase is a complimentary map, thanks. All right, now let's go over and investigate that nurse lady. Oh, oh shovel it, hold on. Dude, free XP, I ain't one to turn it down. Someone's gotta keep these streets clean. You there. Take these mugs. Nice. Alright, we out, Ski. Don't need to go talk to the sheriff again. We have not yet located a new lock. Uh, I'll trade this soap for a lock. Braid, though you really don't think his name is actually Braid, takes your soap and hands you a lock. And back to the sheriff. Yo, dude. Howdy, managed to scare up a lock for myself? Yep, got one right here. That'll do nicely. The sheriff puts the lock on the cell door, then accidentally drops the key and it clatters into the cell. Hellfire. Don't suppose you know how to pick a lock, stranger. You got a needle handy? I'll see what I can do. Deftly pick the lock. I unlocked your cell for you. The sheriff walks into the cell, picks up the key. 
He looks around for a place to hide it, and then eventually sticks it under his hat. Thank you kindly, stranger. If Foreign Springs ever gets any more criminals, they'd better watch out. That's a job, good job you've done. Don't mention it. Here, have this as a souvenir for your time in Foreign Springs. Replica Sheriff Badge. Dude. Oh, we even equipped it on our lapel. Nice. This plastic facsimile of the Sheriff's Badge he actually gives to children who tore the jail. This item goes on your pelt. Plus one armor. Alright, good deal, good deal. Now, let's go over here. Offer a whiskey. Whiskey delivery for you, Doc. What brand? Nurse whiskey. Your favorite, I'm led to believe. Didn't know she makes house calls. Alright, hold on. You hear a rattle as she unlocks the door. Enter the house. Now, so this is mighty conspicuous over here. Uh, wow, shouldn't this be further away from the fireplace? That does seem reasonable to assume. The stove is spotless. Either she's really compulsive about cleaning or she never cooks. Hey, Doc, can you look at, can I look at your books? Not until you give me that whiskey you promised me. Okay, okay, fine. Doc Alice looks to be about in, a, about in her 50s. Her, her hair is gray and her face is lined, but her eyes are still clear and sharp, if bloodshot. She holds out her hand. Whiskey. Stat. Here you go. She cracks open the whiskey and fills a small flask. She takes out of her pocket. She then puts the flask back in her pocket and starts chugging out of the bottle. Jeez, Doc, that doesn't seem healthy. Who's the doctor here, me or you? All right, point take. Uh, further conversation. Doc Alice continues to pour whiskey down her neck, occasionally stopping to breathe. Um, is everything all right? That depends on how fast I can get this whiskey into my bloodstream compared to how fast my liver filters it out. And I can't talk and drink at the same time, so... So what's uh, you, I mean, what's the matter, Doc? What's the matter? The whole world's gone to hell in a horse cart, and you ask what's the matter? Bandits, cow demons, dead men walking. Why don't you go ahead and pick one, and I'll drink to that. Dead men walking. You haven't seen it? Corpses and skeletons staggering around like puppets with half stri with the half their strings cut? I have, actually. Looking to take a bite out of the living? Oh, yeah, there was a skeleton in the cemetery. It's nice to get some outside confirmation that I'm not losing my damn mind. But how is that even possible? It is impossible. It goes against everything I know about medicine. Dead patients don't get back up. Patients? Oh, ouch. Doc Alice turns away, grimacing. Every doctor loses one now and again. You never get used to it, but, well, it happens. But what doesn't happen is them coming back afterward and looking for revenge. That must be pretty rough. Rough. Buddy, I don't think you comprehend the situation. It's not just patients, it's neighbors, friends, husbands. Oh, um... Um, indeed. She turns away from you and focuses her attention on the bottle. Mm. Yep. Further. What now? Do you have any idea what's causing the... Resurrections? Well, I heard a rumor. A rumor? What is it? It's when you get incomplete information from an unverified source. Yeah, okay, thanks. Anyway, what I heard is there's a fella out west that's causing it. A necromancer, they call him. Supposedly, he's sending magic out into the world somehow. It's just your textbook cowboy story about uh, goblins and necromancers. It's as old as time itself. Magic like the beanslingers use? I ain't never heard of a beanslinger raising the dead of you. The scowl deepens. That'd be one hell of a can of beans. You ain't wrong. No, no, I don't want to... Alright, I'm checking out the book. Sure, if you want to... I wanted to talk to her again, but... Now they're gonna do you much good in this doomed, forsaken hellhole. You should try being less cheerful, Doc. Check out the books. Uh, well, they're all medical textbooks, except for a few. Hmm. The Goblinoid Tongues, a primer. You start flipping through the Goblin language book. It's confusing at first, but you eventually get so engrossed by that, by the time you break away from reading, several blurfs have passed. You don't know what blurf is the goblin word. You now also know that blurf is the goblin word for hour. You have learned to speak goblin, sort of. I've made a terrible mistake. I shouldn't have killed that goblin immediately. Hmm. Surely he's got to me. The book tells the story of a legendary treasure, a massive chest full of premium meats, secreted in the hidden sense, not in the extruded sense, in the western desert by an old cowhand named Curly Butterfield. The life and works of Fred Ferguson. The book purports to be a Civil War surgeon's autobiography, but flipping through it, you mostly find a list of reasons that drinking alcohol is bad. So, it's actually a work of ludicrous speculative fiction. Ha <laughs> ha! 
at least there are some useful appendices in the book and some diagrams of appendices. It's pretty in a little. You grab a pair of tweezers and pluck some of the more unsightly eyebrows. Nice. What now? So what's to do with all the TNT? It's so when I feel like I'm about to go, I can blow myself into bits so there won't be nothing left to come back. That seems drastic. Drastic? Hell, no way am I taking the risk of becoming one of those things. Fair enough, I suppose. About the necromancer. Assuming he exists, what about him? Well, maybe someone ought to try and stop him. Doc Alice gives you a sharp look. You? Because I know you ain't talking about me. Why not you? A gray hair old woman that knows as much about fighting as a squirrel knows surgery. Did you hit your head on a bar stool, kid? You ain't that old. You aren't that old, and if I were going to pick someone to go up against a necromancer, it'd be someone who knows about death, but in a scientific way. A doctor, right? Doc Al stares at you hard and takes his wig from a bottle, saying nothing. And it sounds to me like you got plenty of motivation to get the job done for your friends and... and everyone. She continues to look at you. You can see the gears running in her head. It beats doing nothing anyway. Beats locking yourself in a house full of TNT and drinking yourself to death. You aren't even doing any doctoring anymore. She winces and looks away, then shakes her head slowly. You see her exactly wide out wet, ride out west by myself, chasing a rumor. Doesn't have to be by yourself. I'm heading west too, tag along with me and maybe we can find the guy and put a stop to him. It's crazy. Impossible. Impossible like raising the dead is impossible. Damn. Alice crosses her arms and regards you thoughtfully. A spark slowly brightens in her eyes. Alright kid, what the hell, let's give it a shot. Cool. So what I'm actually gonna do though is I'm going to start the game again so I can read this goblin book first and then go and fight the goblin. So I'll be back in a little while.